Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of uh, the Programming Crash Course here on Dumb as Code. I am Chris Franklin. So, um, here we are, lesson three. It's time to learn about variables. So, in the Python programming language, um, we can think of as a variable as a representation of a block of memory, a, a, basically a box, a place to store um, a value that we want to use in the future. Okay, So we don't always want to actively declare a value when we want to use it, like we have been in previous lessons. We're declaring the value and immediately using it. Sometimes we want to store them for later. We want to be able to come back to them, look them up, see what they are, maybe watch them over time as they change. So this is what um, variables will allow us to do, a place to save that value and reference it again later. To create a value um, and store it in a variable, we use something called an assignment statement. Okay. Now, uh, this is a special kind of expression that uh, we use in the language to put a value into a named variable. Okay. Uh, we use the equal sign. That's called the assignment operator. Okay. And so let's look at an example here. All right. We already know how to represent an integer. Uh, let's go ahead and store it. So we're going to say the answer is equal to 42. Okay. We hit enter here. As you can see, this is a little bit different than on our uh, command interpreter than all of the other commands that we've issued before. It doesn't immediately print anything out. That's because an assignment has now been made. There is no actual value being uh, returned on the evaluation of this. Instead, what I can do is I can say answer. And now I can see there is a value being returned when I evaluate answer. Because answer is now a variable. It now represents the value 42. It's the placeholder for that value. Okay, so um, there's a lot of things that we can put uh, into variables. Uh, we're going to look at a couple here. Um, let's say um, we want to say the question is equal to 2, for instance. Okay, now we have two variables. We have answer and question. We can do a lot of different things. Um, we can say b is equal to answer plus question. All right. Now, what is b equal to now? 44, okay? Well, we can also reassign a value, and we can say b is equal to answer times question, all right? Now, what is b? b is 84. You can see there's a, there's a lot of interesting things that we can start to do here. We can start to create more and more complicated expressions by using variables to store values and then referencing them later on and chaining these things together. So um, if we want to say C is equal to B plus uh, answer plus question, all right, let's say this. Uh, what is C going to equal now? 128. See, we're, we're chaining things together. We're creating more and more complicated behaviors. Um, now, I already showed you we could reassign the value uh, over the top of it, uh, uh, over the top of an existing variable. Uh, we can save it back into itself. We can actually reference itself too. Uh, let's say c equals c plus b. And now let's see what c. Oh, let's see what c is. B isn't an actual variable that's been declared. You can see what happens if you try to use an undefined name here. All right. So see, you we're reassigning the value. We're referencing it, adding it to another value, and then reassigning it into the same named variable space. But we're replacing that value with a new one. Okay, so it's created the first time that you store something in it. So the variable is actually um, goes through a process called initialization, where it is a uh, block of memory is set aside for whatever you want to put in there. And it that process happens whenever you assign the value to it. Okay, um, after that, you can use it wherever you want. You can use it all over the place. Uh, this is just a good way to store. You can also store strings. Um, so if you remember the string lesson, uh, we can say um, span equals a lot, and now we can uh, print out span, and there we go. We can see it's span a lot. All right, um, so there's a lot of different uh, things that we can do with variables here. 
Now, what can we actually name these variables? This is important here. Uh, there are only three rules that you have to follow, but if you follow those three rules, you'll be fine. The first rule is it can only be one word, no spaces, okay? Continuous word, all right? And what makes up a word as far as variables are concerned? They can be letters, numbers, and the underscore character. That's it. No other special characters. Uh, and the third rule is actually the number cannot be at the beginning of the word. So if I try to say for number and I try to use that equals 12, I'll get a syntax error because uh, we, we throw off the interpreter by putting that number there to start. But if I want to say number four equals four, for instance, now if I print out the number four, I can see it is four. Um, so you can use numbers in there, you can use underscores, you can put underscores at the beginning, at the end, in the middle, wherever you want to put them. Um, that's the only special character you're allowed to use. So that's it. That's all there is to actually being able to store variables and use them. Um, so uh, go ahead and, and play around with this on your, on your command line interpreter. See what kind of fun stuff you can do with it. All right. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks.